Hi and welcome back for another episode. This week we're going to take a look at what it takes to own and operate an aircraft. We're going to look at fixed costs as well as variable costs in aircraft ownership uh, to possibly help you decide as to whether you want to buy your own plane if you don't already have one or just keep on renting. So uh, let's get to it. Uh, don't forget to tell your friends to subscribe and if you haven't subscribed please do uh, like this video and uh, put your comments below if you have any. I hope I cover everything there is to cover. I'll do my best for you. Let's get to it. The hourly cost of operation, or hourly rate, for your potential airplane purchase is the key to figuring out whether you should buy or just keep renting. And that cost of operation is achieved by working out the fixed and variable costs. So for fixed costs, what we're going to do is look at the tie down and hangar costs as well as insurance and labor involved with the annual inspections. And for the variable costs, what we're going to look at are uh, fuel burn, oil consumption, and of course the ever popular engine wear. For this example, what we're going to do is look at uh, what it would cost to overhaul an engine. So when it comes to tie down, uh, you've got lots of choices. Either you tie down outside or you put it in a hangar. Uh, either way, it's gonna cost you money. And these costs are gonna have to get added to your hourly rate. So uh, tying down outside, for instance, uh, can cost you anywhere from 65 to $150. And the hangar can go anywhere between 250 to 450 and some even up to 600 in parts of Calgary. Uh, you have to look at the benefits, how often you're flying, uh, you know, are you, do you want to just go into the hangar, take the plane out and go for a flight, or do you want to have to clean off the plane and preheat it and do all the things that need to be done in winter time, uh, if that applies to you, uh, before you go flying. Using $200 as a fixed monthly tie-down cost and 100 flight hours per year as an example, we'll get a result of $24 per hour. Another example would be you only fly 50 hours per year, which would now result in a cost of $48 per hour. And if you're the type of pilot who only flies weekends when the weather is nice, we can assume you only fly 20 hours per year, which would result in a whopping $120 per hour cost. Let's keep a running total going while using the 100 hours of flight time per year. Our total, $24 per hour. Insurance is another fixed cost. And unfortunately, this baby is no exception. Uh, because it's a complex type uh, retractable gear uh, and uh, high performance, it costs a little more, actually probably a lot more than say a Cessna 150, where uh, uh, when I used to own a Cessna 150, it cost me about eight, $900 a year for insurance. And uh, this baby back here cost me uh, $3,500 a year. That is Canadian dollars. Insurance rates are different in Canada compared to the States. So make sure you look at that before you decide on what type of aircraft you are going to purchase. So let's use $2,000 for an average insurance rate. This will give us an additional $20 per hour expense for a total of $44 per hour. And for the final fixed costs that we're going to cover in this video, we have the annual inspection labor costs. You can expect to pay anywhere between $800 and $1,200 uh, per year uh, or 100 hour inspection. Now in my particular case, it doesn't cost me anything, so I don't have to add anything onto my bottom line of operating costs. Because it's an experimental aircraft, I built the plane myself and I can do all the labor on my own. We will use $1,000 as an average for our annual inspection labor cost. This will add another $10 to our cost per hour, resulting in a $54 per hour total. So the most variable of variable costs is your fuel burn. The reason is because you never fly at the same power setting and gas prices are different from airport to airport. What I do is I look at the engine manufacturer's manual, see what the maximum fuel burn is for that particular engine and apply that to my calculations. At this airport where I fly, for instance, 
uh, fuel is $1.35 a liter. That comes out to about uh, $5, a little over $5 a gallon. So that means that if I take an engine that burns maximum 10 gallons per hour and apply that $5 to it, we're looking at $50 an hour to operate the aircraft. We will use 10 gallon per hour fuel burn, costing us $50 per hour in fuel for a total of $104 per hour. So have you got enough oil? It's important. You're going to have to add it every once in a while. The average small engine aircraft like this uh, consumes, they say, normally one quart for every 10 hours. So if you're the pilot who does an average of uh, 30 hours a year, that would be three quarts. Now here in Canada, this each quart costs about $9.30 plus taxes. We would require two oil changes in our 100 hours per year example, thus requiring 16 quarts total for an engine that holds eight quarts maximum. This would give us a subtotal of $144. Add $70 for two oil filters, and a quart for every 10 hours of flying, let's call that $1. That will result in a total of $3 per hour for oil. We now add the $3 to our running total, a grand total of $107 per hour. And the biggest expense for airplanes, of course, are the engine. Without the engine, we have a glider. So it's a little difficult to give an exact cost related to an engine. Uh, it would have to be based on the amount of hours or TBO time before overhaul of the engine and how many hours it had when you purchased it. So for instance, if you've got a 2,000 uh, hour aircraft engine, uh, TBO of 2,000 hours, and you've got 800 hours, well then you'd have that 1,200 hours to go before you'd have to overhaul it. Some engines have 2,400 hours and some 2,000 and some 1,800. It all depends on the type of aircraft, so you'd have to look at that specifically. But the basic idea is that you take what it would cost to replace the engine completely and uh, divide it by X number of hours that you do per year and put that into every time you fly. So the more hours you fly, it's a little catch-22. The more hours you fly, the faster you get to TBO. Uh, and the more you're going to put into uh, the piggy bank for your engine and the less hours uh, you fly the less money you're going to put into the piggy bank and the longer it's going to take to TBO. Now of course there's regular maintenance stuff that has to be done as well. Uh, you just got to remember don't reach into that piggy bank unless you absolutely have to. And if you end up like some people who've got lots of money left in the piggy bank because they haven't replaced their engine yet, you can buy another plane. For our engine overhaul calculation, let's use 2,000 hours as a TBO and an overhaul cost of $24,000. If you were to purchase an airplane with a brand new engine, this would mean that you have 2,000 hours before an overhaul would be required, and thus generating a cost of $12 per hour. If our plane had a mid-time engine, that cost would double to $24 per hour. If our plane only had 200 hours left before overhaul, this would translate into a cost of $120 per hour in order to have enough money saved up for when the overhaul came due. This is usually the primary reason that an airplane that has a high time engine costs less to purchase. Let's use our mid-time engine value of $24 and add it to our running total. Our grand total cost per hour, based on our example, $131 per hour. I like to add an extra $10 per hour just to cover items that you wouldn't normally change all the time. For instance, uh, tires, spark plugs, and brakes. So now that we've got a total for our hourly cost, we can go out and make the decision as to whether we rent or buy uh, an airplane. It's important that you really consider how many hours you plan on flying per year before you make the big decision. Because obviously, as we saw, uh, the more hours you fly, the cheaper it gets. The less hours you fly, the more expensive it gets. Things like partnerships are also an option for some people. Uh, not for me, because not too many people like me. <laughs> 
Well, uh, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this type of video, let me know and uh, I'll think about making more of them. Uh, thank you very much.